Hi, welcome to my channel, Jabber Time, where I do math videos from algebra to calculus and differential equations, simplified with examples. Sometimes I add more videos about apps and programs to enhance teaching and learning online. If you're new here and you liked this video, hit the like button and subscribe. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. And I want to thank you for watching and hope to see you again and again. Thank you. Okay, today we're going to talk about the product and the quotient rules. The product rule says if f and g are differentiable at x, then the derivative of the product of f times g is a sum of two different products f prime times g and f times g prime. Kind of lengthy to look at here's a short way the derivative of the product of f and g is the sum of products that are different you kind of like say f times g f times g f times g here you take the derivative of one of them in my case i'm taking it for the f function here I switch. I take it for the g function. So do you start with f prime g or do you start with f g prime? It doesn't make any difference. You know, these two are two items with an addition. An addition is commutative. 5 plus 7 is the same thing as 7 plus 5. All what you need to do is, or keep in mind, is you have to do f times g, f times g, go back with the tick marks, put one for f switch and put one for g let's talk about the other rule the quotient rule if f and g are differentiable at x and of course g of x cannot equal to zero because it's in the denominator then the derivative of f over g at x exists and the derivative of the quotient is of the following you take g at the bottom side you square it then you take g as is on top multiply it by f prime the top numerator derivative this time we subtract here it was add subtract now you see this right here you could put them gf gf fg doesn't matter the main thing is f is prime here you switch g is prime let me think or say it differently quotient rule derivative g square g as is g prime if you have g here then it's f prime if you have g prime here then it's f next to it now let me tell you one more thing as a comment before we move on do you remember Earlier in previous videos, we talked about the uh, f plus g, the sum. The derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives. That does not work for product or quotient. It's not that simple. All right. Because those are lecture videos and it's kind of hard to cover everything and show you proofs. So I'm trying to be practical and show you what are these rules with some simplified examples let's move on two simple examples i just want to start you with simple simple examples all right example number one f of x equals x multiplied by x cubed plus one we need f prime using the product rule this is my kind of like f and this is like my g all right think about it this way x uh, f g f g once you put the tick mark for one of them, you switch here. All right? You're going to keep thinking this way. It's kind of like a pattern. Now, what is x prime? What is x cubed plus 1 prime? Means derivative. That is 1. And that is 3x squared plus 0, right? Then simplify. You know how to simplify. And you get the following. I'm not writing, reading this, 
in detail because I want to save you some time. But everything is displayed as you could see. Simplify it, you get 4x cubed plus 1. Now you might say, do I have to use the product rule? Well, in this case, you don't. But if it says use the product rule, use it. You need to know everything about those rules. Sometimes you can't use distributive. So just do it. I'll show you later on what I mean. Imagine if you're going to test it and it's so simple. I call them simple examples because I made them just to give an idea. How do you apply the product tool? Imagine if you say to yourself, you know what? I'm going to use the distributive property. Go for it. I got x4, x to the fourth plus x. What's the derivative of this? 4x cubed, one less than four. What's the derivative of x? We talked about that last video, one. But look, same answer. Well, of course, it has to be the same answer because nothing is wrong with that. Okay, let's move on. Quotient rule. x cubed plus 2x over x. Using the quotient rule, you just follow. You take this down, that's kind of like my g. That's kind of like my f in the formula. g squared, you see it? You put it up as is. That's my g. Here, it's going to be prime. That's my numerator. This has no prime, that means this guy has a prime. Minus, no plus, okay? Plus here, minus here. These guys are the same, but you alternate who takes a prime. This guy took the prime, that means now this guy takes a prime. Hopefully that helps. We know how to find derivatives. We know how to simplify. 2x minus 2x cancels and I get 2x cubed over x to the second which is 2x done let's go the other way you know you could divide this by this and this by this which is called distributive by the way or you could divide everything on top and everything on the bottom side by x and you get the following x cubed over x 2x over x which is x to the second plus 2 what's the derivative of this x to the second will give you 2x, right? 2 will be 0. Look, same answer. Same answer. I'm going to give you an idea. Because some students go like, uh, that's kind of lengthy. I'm going to do this from now on. I go like, it doesn't work all the time. I'll give you an example. Uh, how about if this is sine x? And this is uh, e to the x plus 17x. Are you going to divide e to the x by sine x? You could. How about this? How about if this is sine plus cosine and this is e plus 17x? How are you going to divide? So, trust me, you need to know enough about the product rule. You need to know the quotient rule. You need to have enough skills. I call them skills. You need to know as much as you can. Let's move to another example. Use the product rule to find the following f prime, where f is 2x to the second multiplied by 3x to the second plus 1. This is two things. It's like u and v. In classrooms, I tell my students, it's like u and me, instead of u and v. To get their attention, especially if they get tired or they're sleepy, it's all about you and me, not you and v. Okay? So f equals u times v, f prime will be, as I said, u v, u v. Once you give one of them the prime, you switch here, give it to the other one. Where do you start? It doesn't matter. Just keep that in mind. So this is my product. That's like u and v or u and me. Do it again. Give the tick mark to one of them. Switch here, give it to the other one. You know how to find the derivative of 3x to the second plus 1? 6x plus 0. You know how to find the derivative of this? Right? You know how to simplify. And simplify even more. If you want. Now, I'm not reading everything. 
but you could pause as I told you earlier you could always pause my video whenever you want to write notes or do whatever you want by hitting the spacebar so I'm hitting the spacebar again will move you forward back to play mode also if I did not mention the right arrow moves the, the video few frames to the right the left arrow will move the video backward few frames just to let you know let's move on and be, be, be practical as much as we can to save you some time and make the recording or the video not too lengthy because those sections uh, we don't need them to make them like 45 minutes to be honest use the question rule to evaluate derivative of 1 plus x over 3 plus 2x we know that what's the denominator we know what's the numerator we're gonna play the game again here's a picture how the game looks like it's all about you and me if v is the denominator it's gonna start right here i usually start right here v square i go up here v by itself to me u is 1 plus x to me v is 3 plus 2x let's find derivatives here to go back quick that's another way to simplify things if this is u the derivative is 1 if this is me the derivative is 2 go back that's v squared that's v as is that's v prime and that's a minus sign give it a practice do it right i feel like i'm gonna repeat myself a lot give it a practice do it come back to the screen if you want to see if you got the answer right uh, math without some practice it's not gonna work you have to practice and do it you know how to find derivatives all right you know how to simplify you know how to cancel like terms and that's my answer think that should do it for this problem let's move on 7x minus 2x e to the x let's do it well 7 we could pull it outside and go in as this is a function we know how to do this it's just 7 by itself we're gonna treat this x e to the x as a product and pull the two up front that's why i'm picking on a different problem to show you that they're not always polynomials all right seven times one or seven this is u and this is v u v u v once you take the prime to one of them this time you switch what's the derivative of e to the x e to the x what's the de derivative of x one you know how to simplify and that's my final answer one more time you could pause the video and look at it i'm trying to save you some time okay and show you more and more examples here's another example quotient but this one has more into it just like your assignments find the equation of the tangent line to the function f of x given down below at x equals 3 well how do you do it i'll show you all the steps first to find the derivative of a quotient we talked about this enough so i'm not gonna keep talking this is how you do it simplify cancel like terms that's my derivative function anywhere i want on the curve but now we want it to be at three so when you plug in three in this f prime you're actually looking for the slope m the slope of the tangent at x equals three just plug it in i get minus five over four instead of x i'm gonna write three see this x i'm gonna write three in the derivative function and that's my slope of the tangent to the curve of my function when x equals three the equation of the tangent line at x equals three is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 we know m but we don't know y one that corresponds to x1 so this acts like my point but now we're gonna need it as x1 y1 so x1 is three 
you plug it in the original function that's going to be 3 plus 4 over 3 minus 1 and you get 7 over 2 so if that's my x1 that's my y1 and that's how i got 7 over 2 or you could simplify it to slope intercept form i think that's good enough for practice as you could see but math is not just practice and practice Calculus is a way more important than what you think. And we're not just doing practice here, but in math classes, we do more practice than applications. But it's very interesting to see how math is outside of classrooms. Math is not the other way around. Life is filled with math or behavior that we take it to classrooms and we try to let students practice and be able to speak math when they go out to the real world. Here's what I mean. This is a lengthy problem, but I want to save myself and save yourself some time. So I have everything written. I'm not going to go too slow and take too much time. Let me show you what I mean. Population growth. Consider the following population functions. Two questions in one. This model is different than this model. 200 t over t plus 2, 600 multiplied by the quotient t squared plus 3 over t squared plus 9. Find the instantaneous growth rate of the population. Of course, we kind of look at it for t greater than or equal to 0. We do not go backwards. What is the instantaneous growth rate when t equals 5? Estimate. Now, it says estimate because we are not advanced in calculus yet to find the exact, all right? Estimate the time when the instantaneous, trying to go fast a little bit, sorry for that. Growth rate is greatest. Evaluate and interpret the limit of P prime, the derivative of these two guys, when T goes to infinity. I'm gonna cover this in both ways, the limit of P prime and also the limit of P itself. I'll show you what they mean. Use a graphing utility like a graphing calculator to graph the population, the original function, and the growth rate, which means p prime. Earlier, before this example, you go like, okay, I see f, I see f prime. You showed me how to graph or how to connect them from each other on a separate two graphs but how does this relate to life for example but anyway let me talk less and show you more details this is number one i have everything right here so i'm gonna go a little bit fast to show you number two and we'll stop the recording okay here's number one find the instantaneous growth rate for t greater than or equal to zero you just do the quotient rule you know how to do it i'm not reading all this and waste your time i got 400 over t plus 2 to the second what is the instantaneous growth rate at 5 plug in 5 in this about 8.16 estimate the time when the instantaneous growth rate the greatest well we can't do it 100% now because we don't know enough about calculus. But here's what the book has. The value of P prime is as large as possible when its denominator is as small as possible. That's using algebra. Think about this. P prime at zero will be 100. When this is zero, You'll have 400 over 0 plus 2, which is 2, to the second, which is 4, 400 over 4, which is 100. Now, let me think differently. If this is not 0, if this is, let's say, 10, 10 plus 2 is 12, 12 to the second, that's a lot. 400 over a bigger number is going to be small. So this will be greatest when this is the smallest and this will be the smallest when t is zero which makes sense all right okay enough of that part d 
evaluate and talk about the limit okay i did limit of p prime this is p prime we know how to find the limits in previous videos apply the limit to this guy as t approaches zero t approaches zero 400 over sorry as t approaches infinity going all the way to the right if this gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger this whole thing gets close to zero so the answer is zero let me go the other way around let's go back to our function if t goes to infinity what's this gonna go to do you remember when i said earlier on previous sections if these are the same level you just take it from the coefficients which is 200 over 1 or divide the top and bottom side by the highest exponent or power which is t to the power 1 kind of lengthy to say but if you go back you will know about more about limits so the limit of this as t approaches infinity is actually 200 over 1 which is 200 let me talk about the graph which is part e use the graphing utility to graph the population and the growth rate here's the population increasing here's the derivative which is population rate highest slope slow slope slower slope slower slope but looks like it's not getting up it's going up to a horizontal asymptote which is at 200 the limit of our function the main function is gonna go to 200 over 1 which is 200 I'm not putting 200 here as a horizontal axis I just want to show you that this is actually what happens and this is your derivative so if they want to find the limit of limit of this as t approaches infinity we are approaching zero so my point is my slopes of the curve they approach a zero a horizontal tangent they don't increase anymore so here's what the book says this means that the population eventually has a growth rate of zero which means that the population approaches a steady state hopefully i said enough let me move on to the second problem i'll try to speak less and i'll leave it for you i just want to present it to you instead of skipping those ty type of problems because calculus is not just practice of simple algebra polynomials and so on here's the second one you know how to find a derivative question true plug in five on a graphing calculator this is my function it's increasing but has a limit derivatives they increase then they slow down as you could see the prime is of this nature this is a higher degree than this so eventually it's gonna go down to zero that's what I have right here so slow down and look at it see if it makes sense and if you have any comments or questions leave them down below and I will get back to you or post them in the discussion board I don't want to keep talking I think I have it here for you you could pause the video and read more it does make a lot of sense and it's very helpful to see how calculus is in the real world thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one thank you thank you for watching if you like this video subscribe and give it a like and i'll see you in the next one thank you